okay, so a lot of us, when we first saw The Force Awakens, we read the opening crawl, we got the whole story, Luke vanished, uh, the First Order wants to destroy him, but then there's this interesting part. With the support of the Republic, General Leia Organa leads a brave resistance. She is desperate to find her brother, Luke, and gain his help in restoring peace and justice to the galaxy. Okay, so for someone that's not really into Star Wars, that's whatever. You really don't notice. But then when you look at Star Wars for those people who dive into it, into the canon, into Legends, Leia did not just, oh, I'm going to become a guerrilla leader after the Battle of Endor. Leia actually became a senator. She took her father, well, her stepfather, Bail Organa's spot. And I think that's very interesting uh, because I feel many Star Wars fans actually don't know what happened that lost her, her position in the New Republic. Okay, so I'm not going to go into details like I did with the 212th or the Boba Fett videos or anything like that. Uh, I'm just going to explain from pretty much the end of the war at the Battle of Jakku all the way to where we are with The Last Jedi ended. And it's not really going to be a history, it's more going to be an explanation to why Leia was taken off the Galactic Senate and why the military was cut down so much. Because if we remember, towards the end of the Galactic Civil War, following news that Palpatine had been killed on the Death Star, millions flocked to the Rebellion and fought against the Empire, even causing riots in Coruscant, taking down the statues of Palpatine in Empire Monument Square, things such as that. Um, so that's what we're going to discuss. We're not going to discuss the war until the end. We're just going to discuss once the, the Republic was founded, so on, and what happened that caused everything that happened to happen. So we're going to begin, obviously... At the beginning of the Repu New Republic. This will be when Mon Mothma is picked as the new Chancellor. This is due to one, she has the most experience. And two, she is the actual only leader from the original Alliance still alive. We uh, Think about this. The original leaders of the Alliance were Bail Organa, Mon Mothma... And we're going real far back now, but technically, Padme Amidala, Leia's own mother, was one of the founders. She, and this isn't showed in the film unless you have the director's cut, but in the Revenge of the Sith novelization, it is explained that they were planning the rebellion due to Palpatine gaining emergency powers. So... She's all that's left, Mon Mothma, and they elect her to be the new Chancellor. It is also decided that they will use Mothma's home planet of Shangilla as the new capital of the Republic, which they also make a decision, which is very interesting course of action, that every few years, the capital will change, which... In some ways, that makes sense, because the whole reason Coruscant was so corruptible was because it was just a giant city. So, it does make sense in the long run of things. But also, following the Galactic Concordance, which ends the Galactic Civil War, exiles the Empire, uh, Grand Vizier, Maz and Mata, is taken under arrest, all the, the whole nine... The Republic passed the Military Disarmament Act. We see this in American history following the American the American Revolution. My apologies. We see a disarmament, and now there is barely an army or any defense. Mothma, it makes sense why she did this, because again, remember she was around during the rise of Palpatine. And she 
knows that's how he took power because he had the clone army. And the clone army, I believe, at the end of the war was in the trillions because they just kept kept them coming because they needed more troops to fight the droids because it's far easier just to manufacture a droid than it is to birth a clone. So they had this giant army and this is one of the fascinating parts about Mom Mothma. She can identify corruption. And I think she actually is able to identify the corruption in herself as a politician that if she is given this power, why not use it? So I think that is another reason she decides to put the uh, disarmament into effect. But there are some members of the new galactic government that do not agree with this. And one of the main members are Leia Organa. So Leia obviously is against this. Um, she's against this because she knows the people who escaped following the Battle of Jakku. They weren't just going to sit back and allow themselves to be defeated. They were going to come back. And the same people, those are the same people who destroyed Alderaan. So she already has this hate for them. But at the same time, she also wants to defend what she fought and her father died to create. And her actual mother in a certain aspect, if you think about it. So she's obviously against it. Mon Mothma thinks she's, you know, alright, well, let's not turn into Palpatine. So that all happens. And... It's very hard because now she's being looked at like a war hawk. A war hawk is someone who is looking for any excuse pretty much for war. Like, oh, they're, they're going to come back. But everyone else is saying, no, they're not going to come back. But obviously they do come back. So by doing this, she obviously now is going to get many enemies in the Republic because they want peace. They want to live in peace. They're tired of the war. They're tired of the countless lives being lost. They just want it over. And she's kind of in the path, in the path of that. So now that the Galactic Concordia is signed, the disarmament is put into effect, she's now again a senator. And she is the voice of the newly created Populist Party. Which is, if we want to put it, into, I guess, our modern politics, she would be kind of, the populace would kind of be looked at as conservatives on some stance. It's kind of like they cut the two political parties in half, and the certain beliefs and of one party they connected, but military-wise, they are more conservative, and the centralist party is more liberal. They don't want the army. They just want peace. And the conservatives say, no, we, we, need, we need them just in case. So that's what happens when she becomes the voice of the populist party. A few years after Mamothma steps down as, as chancellor, a new, a new chancellor is elected, Lenevere Villachon. Along with his election as Chancellor, they also decide to create a new position. This is the position of the first Senator. Which, when you read the description, he it's pretty much the Chancellor position. He's pretty much, the whoever holds the position of first Senator is pretty much an Assistant Chancellor. Not like the Vice President, he's like in charge of everything the Chancellor's in charge of. It's just sometimes... The first chancellor would, the first senator would have to ask the chancellor for permission. So the election arrives, and obviously the populists are going to put who they think is the best choice, which is obviously Leia. Leia at this time is married to Han Solo, a famous general. Her brother 
who it's not very I'm pretty sure they know they're related in some way, but her brother is the Jedi Knight who created the new who's building the new Jedi Order and she has a son, Ben Solo. She's a very likable candidate and why not? She fought the war, she did everything in her power to do it. So she is the prime populist decision. And the problem is no one knows her true lineage. And now with her becoming the first senator, the leaks for the first order in the Senate don't want that because then the first order, instead of coming to an undefended galaxy, are now going to come to a galaxy with Leia Organa leading a big army defending it. So, the centrist party senator, Lady Carice Sindane, is actually one of these leaks. And the thing is, she is Leia's successor. Not in the populist party, but in her representation of the elder houses of Alderaan that survived. Unbeknownst beknownst to Leia, her father left her a message on a quite personal level. She believed the message was a political message, like, you need to take over for me, if anything happens, I'm going to be proud of you, yada, yada, yada. It is not. It is him admitting to her who her true parents were. Padme Amidala and Anakin Skywalker. But what is worse is not only does he admit it's Anakin Skywalker, he explains what happened to Anakin. So, Lady Carice Sindine being the successor to her position... Leia tells her she can read the message, thinking it is of political reasons, not personal. Carissa obviously being wanting to get rid of her, goes to Senator Ralsom Casterfo, the centrist uh, representative who's running for the first senator. Who is very disconnected from the First Order and everything. He, he honestly is a bipartisan uh, senator. He's actually a very good friend of Leia's. So he's from the planet of Riosa. And they get along. His planet suffered heavily under Darth Vader. Very bad. And he hated Vader. Which you know, it's not hard. Because the man is one of those evil human beings after the Emperor. So he finds out, and without a second guess, he tells everyone. Now, a few things happen due to this. The hopes for a public army growing stomped out. The hopes to be prepared for the First Order when they return are stomped out. Leia has to resign her position. And, the worst, Leia begins to lose her son. Ben did not know who her father was. And what makes it worse is she didn't tell him when the news came. He was told by a stranger who his grandfather was. This is very traumatizing, obviously. And he, this is the seeds of him falling to the dark side and becoming the person we know as Kylo Ren. So, that's the explanation on why everything happened the way it did. She was actually a very prominent senator, a very liked senator, a very well-approached uh, senator, but the thing was she got hit with the scandal, which destroyed her. Her entire political career was over, and what she did following it, as we know... She went back at all the rebel leaders, Akbar, Wedge, all of them, Ninub, 
and reformed the rebellion under the names of the resistance and began to do hit and run tactics on the first order before their invasion and then they actually were supported by Lenever Villachum's Senate. They were supported, but obviously, as we saw in The Force Awakens, um, the Senate is wiped out. So, that is how Leia was removed from the Galactic Senate, and why there is no large military of the uh, Republic. Hey guys, so thanks for watching. Um, I really enjoy doing these videos. It's a lot of fun. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm trying to get more out tonight. I had a very busy few days, so I wasn't able to get as many videos out as I was hoping to. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you next time. And as always, may the Force be with you. Always.